is Kenza Dufo-Motel. I'm the Director of Research, Conservation and Scientific Services at the Canadian Conservation Institute. Welcome to this virtual visit of CCI and the Canadian Heritage Information Network as part of Doors Open Ottawa. Today you will have a chance to learn a bit more about what happens behind the doors of 1030 Innis Road in Ottawa. First, a few introductory remarks about CCI and CHIN. They are special operating agencies within the Department of Canadian Heritage, both created in 1972. CCI has a mandate to advance and promote the conservation of Canada's heritage collections through its expertise in conservation science, treatment and preventive conservation. CCI supports cultural and heritage institutions in Canada by offering them a wide array of specialized services, conducts research and development, and shares its expertise through publications, training, and videos. CHIN assists Canadian museums in documenting, managing, and sharing information about their collections by carrying out research and development on collections documentation tools and standards as well as best practices in digitization and digital preservation. CHIN also maintains Artifacts Canada, an online database that allows public access to Canadian collections. I invite you to consult CCI's and CHIN's web pages, CCI's Facebook page or our CCI video gallery on YouTube to learn more about us and what we do. In addition, as you watch this video, you will see suggested videos pop up these videos will take a closer look at the fascinating work we, we are doing on behalf of all Canadians. But before going any further, I would like to hand it over to Jérôme Moisan, the Director General of CCI and CHIN. Hello. I'm pleased to welcome you for a virtual visit of our institution. As you know, this year, we're sadly not able to welcome you in person to come and explore the fascinating world of heritage conservation. However, we have prepared a video overview of the various activities and research we are doing at CCI and CHIN. I hope that we will be able to welcome you in person in 2022. In the meantime, I encourage you to continue to support our heritage institutions and museums by visiting them in person when public health conditions allow it and also by taking in the amazing and, and creative things they are offering online. You may even see some objects that came through CCI and CHIN at some point in time. Thank you for joining us at Four Doors Open Ottawa 2021. We'll start the tour with Crystal Maitland, Conservator of Works of Art on Paper. Welcome virtually to the Paper Conservation Lab at the Canadian Conservation Institute, or CCI. In this lab, we have three conservators with different specialties, books and bound volumes, photographs and archival materials, and works of art on paper. The Paper Lab is one of six conservation labs at CCI. I'll introduce you to two others as well. First, the Archaeology Conservation Lab. Here, conservators specialize in inorganic and organic materials found in either terrestrial or aquatic archaeological contexts. The volumes of, lab, of artifacts worked on in the archaeological lab is unparalleled in other CCI treatment labs. They tend to count their items by the hundreds. Next, the objects lab. Here, our metals conservator works on materials both historic and modern, and on a scale from the handheld to the monumental installation. Our two objects conservators work on collections made of materials that range from the natural, like birch bark, ivory, or leather, to synthetic materials like plastics. Let's step back into the paper conservation lab to take a deeper look at one of the artifacts we recently treated. CCI doesn't have a collection. The artifacts we treat are from public collections all across the country. The Jewish Public Library in Montreal applied to have this rolled manuscript treated by the paper lab. Format-wise, it is called a rotulus, as it rolls vertically. It is written in Hebrew script in iron gall ink on 12 pieces of handmade rag paper glued together end to end. After treatment, the item was photographed in its entirety and the images stitched together to create this composite that permits study of the whole manuscript. Even unrolling the manuscript for initial examination posed a lot of risk 
Iron gall ink tends to make the paper it is written on very brittle. You can see the fracturing and losses of the brittle ink lines in these transmitted light and detailed images. Tightly rolled paper often needs the aid of humidification to safely unroll, but introducing humidity to iron gall ink is one of the worst things you can do. It spreads the damaging iron ions and acids from the ink lines to the surrounding paper, eventually making the manuscript illegible. Fortunately, a lot of research, some of it here at CCI, has gone into the safe treatment of iron gall ink. For this manuscript, low moisture mending methods and the thinnest Japanese tissues stabilize the parts of the paper made brittle by the ink, allowing the otherwise strong paper to flex. The treatment was a success to permit access to the previously all but unusable manuscript. As it does need to stay in a rolled format, acrylic roller rods permit it to be safely used while requiring a less tight roll. The high resolution digital images also provide a means of accessing the text without needing to roll or unroll it each and every time. Treatment isn't all that CCI conservators do. We have a three-legged stool of responsibilities. Research into new conservation processes or to better understand deterioration or fabrication of materials and sharing of knowledge through publications, workshops, and through answering questions. Together with treatments, these let us support the work of other cultural heritage professionals caring for collections in Canada and beyond. Thank you. Next, we'll turn to Jean Tetro, who is a senior conservation scientist in the Preventive Conservation Division. Good day. A few words on the Preventive Conservation Division. The word preventive says it all. Experts of our division work upstream. Knowledge and tools are being developed to help museums better protect their collection. The enemies of museum objects are the agent of deterioration. Like for example, fire, water, light, pollutants, insect, and relative humidity at excessive levels. We are a team of preventive conservation advisor and conservation scientists. We do research to better understand the effect of those agents, to control them and to manage the risk. We do site visits, offer training workshops, develop publications, and answer to a multitude of questions. Over the years, I've specialized in the control of pollutants and their harmful effects on museum and archival collection. These pollutants include atmospheric pollutants, such as ozone and nitrogen dioxide. These pollutants can seep into museum. There's also pollutant generated inside museum, even inside display cases. These pollutants are released by building materials. We all remember the smell of a freshly cut wooden plank or freshly applied paint. Among those volatile compounds emitted by this material, they are, some are dangerous for objects. They contain, among other things, organic acid and sulfur compounds. I often get questions about commercial paints that museum staff want to apply inside display cases for, say, decorative reason. Indeed, some paints can cause corrosion on metals. The research carried out at CCI has allowed us to better understand the issue of volatile compounds emission and to develop guidelines both for the choice of paint in a museum context. Some of these results are available on video. Take a look at it and you will never see your paint can the same way. We'll now turn to Nathalie Guinnett, who is a Heritage Information Analyst in CHIN. Hello and welcome. The Canadian Heritage Information Network, or CHIN, has been working in the service of the Canadian Museum community for 50 years. At first, CHIN helped museums construct computerized inventories of that collection. Then, in the 1990s, CHIN maintained a website where the Canadian Museum community could find resources to improve the online visibility of their collections. Today, CHIN continues its leadership role in technology research, documentation standards, digitization, and digital preservation, and offers online resources to help museums carry out the task of managing one of their most important assets, collections data. For example, 
A museum cataloging this object could use nomenclature for museum cataloging, a bilingual vocabulary and classification system managed by, by Chin to select the object name sewing table. It could also check for similar sewing table in Artifacts Canada, a portal on canada.ca with an ever-growing database of over 4 million records and more than 1 million images contributed by 500 institutions across Canada. The museum could contribute data and images of their sewing table and other items in their collections to Artifacts Canada to help bolster the online visibility of their collections and make their objects accessible to the public. Chen wants to modernize how to display museum data in Artifacts Canada, thanks to Link Open Data or LOD. These will allow users to search the web as if it were an interlink database, make connections between different sets of data, formally store in silos, and ask more complex questions about diverse areas of expertise. As one of the early Canadian adopters, Chin will apply link open data principles to enhance its existing resources and will work together with heritage organizations by providing link open data training and resources to help produce richer content for audiences. Through contribution to Artifacts Canada, the museum sewing table could be linked to other sewing tables and other museum collections that contributed to Artifacts Canada but could also be linked to control vocabularies, which are themselves linked to other objects and databases. This is only a short description of some activities at the Canadian Heritage Information Network. Enjoy your virtual visit. And I'd like to turn to Kate Helwig, who is a senior conservation scientist in the Conservation Science Division. Hello, and welcome to the Conservation Science Division at the CCI. The Conservation Science Group is currently made up of 11 professionals, nine conservation scientists, and two photographic documentation technologists. Most of our conservation scientists have a background in chemistry or physics. We work with heritage professionals across Canada to answer a wide range of scientific questions. Our activities include testing and evaluating new conservation treatments, aging and deterioration studies, scientific documentation and analysis of heritage objects, and development of new analytical methodologies. Today, I'm going to focus on scientific analysis of cultural heritage objects, since that's the area that I work in. We use scientific techniques to analyze the materials of objects to help conservators make decisions about treatments, and also to assist in dating objects and to learn more about the state of preservation of a material or about the history of its use. Some of the methods we use are non-invasive, that means that the examination is done without taking a sample or changing the object in any way. This includes specialized types of photography, and there'll be a video link at the end of this presentation where you can learn more about the photographic techniques that we use. We also undertake non-invasive scientific analysis that allows us to determine the composition of materials without touching the object. Sometimes we need to remove a tiny amount of sample from a cultural heritage object to answer a research question. Of course, samples are only taken from areas where material can be removed safely and unobtrusively. A typical sample size for the scientific instrumentation at the CCI is extremely small and barely visible to the naked eye. We investigate these microscopic samples with a range of analytical techniques. These include, polarized light microscopy and scanning electron microscopy with X-ray microanalysis, gas chromatography mass spectrometry and infrared spectroscopy, and finally, X-ray diffraction and Raman spectroscopy. If you watch the first video at the link that you can see here, you'll learn about how we used some of these scientific techniques to study the painting materials of group of seven artist, J.E.H. MacDonald. And as I mentioned, the second video at this link describes the specialized photographic techniques that we use at CCI for object documentation. Thanks for listening and enjoy the rest of your virtual visit. Now, Roger Baird will speak to you about Heritage Interiors Conservation. He is the manager of the division. Hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Welcome to Heritage Interiors at CCI. Unlike our colleagues that largely operate out of lab spaces, our team tends to be on site 
within historic sites and places, such as what you see behind me. A lot of our work is focused on the national capital, including Parliament Hill, as well as the judicial precinct, which is that broad area around the Supreme Court of Canada. But we also assist other stewards and custodians of our built heritage, which is composed of buildings, sites, and monuments. Now, as most of you know, our Parliament building, our center block, is undergoing a refit in order to serve the needs of MPs and senators in the future. But at the same time, the planners and architects need to protect and preserve the features and details to make this building so much more than just an office. When we talk about conservation in relation to built heritage, it includes preservation, that's to say keeping it as it is, restoration, remaking it as it was, as well as rehabilitation, adapting to meet new requirements. Our team recently visited Cedar Hedges, and that's the historic house of the warden for Kingston Penitentiary, which now functions as a museum. While we're on site in sampling, we'd be cutting out small chips for laboratory analysis. We'd be sanding out reveals of paint for visual examination. We've also removed accumulated layers of white paint from a few large areas to reveal the finishes underneath, whether that's a false wood graining or other layers of different color. Back at the laboratory afterwards, we'll take some of those unprocessed paint samples under the microscope, examine some of these paint chips, polish them up into cross sections, and look at them with visible light, blue light, and ultraviolet incident light, and then match layers to color standards under daylight illumination. So depending on what you want to accomplish with that research, you could find out what the historical patterns are for those paints, what color schemes went together at different time periods, and then select what modern commercial paints will best match those shades that you want to replicate. And that's about it. Next, you'll be hearing from Wendy Baker, who's a senior conservator of fine arts. Hello, I'm Wendy Baker, the Senior Paintings Conservator in the Fine Arts Lab, and I would like to take you now on a tour of three conservation labs, fine arts, textiles, and furniture. The objects we treat all come from publicly accessible collections in Canada, and our job is to conserve and in the long term to preserve the objects we treat. As we work hand in hand with our conservation scientists, we are also able to uncover many details such as artists or manufacturing techniques, and materials, as well as learning something of the history of the object. As a result, not only are the objects conserved, but their stories begin to emerge. Our first stop is a textile lab. Here you can see the dress belonging to Maud Allen, a modern dancer who wore this heavily beaded and highly ornate costume to dance the vision of Salome in 1906, which apparently sparked a Salomania craze. The dancing took a heavy toll on the light fabric and the conservator is now re uh, reinforcing the costume. We in the Fine Arts Lab are currently examining a blanket painting by the Métis artist Bob Boyer. This 1998 painting is one of just a few acrylic on flannel works produced by this artist. One of the challenges is in determining how best to display this iconic painting so that it appears as the artist originally intended, suspended by leather straps, while maintaining adequate support for the fabric and paint layers. The final lab on our tour is furniture. The object you see is a winter hearse belonging to the Grey Roots Museum and Archives in Owen Sound, Ontario. This is the only known historic funerary vehicle from Grey County still in existence. This was made sometime between 1936 and 1938, and it was driven right up until 1952. It serviced the rural population in and around Priceville, Ontario, during the winter months when only a horse-drawn vehicle with sleigh runners could navigate unplowed roads. Its style is Victorian Gothic with Art Deco influences and includes carved swag curtains, curtain ties, decorative moldings, and corniced roof. Over the years, many modifications were made to the vehicle and up to 20 layers of paint were applied to keep it looking good. After its retirement, time, the elements, as well as pests took their toll. It is currently undergoing restoration to clean, to preserve remaining paint, as well as to stabilize weakened structural elements. 
So this brings us to the end of the tour of fine arts, textiles and furniture. If you wish to know more about our work, I invite you to check out some of our online videos, such as framing a panel painting and stitches used in textile conservation. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have enjoyed this virtual tour. The professionals at CCI and Chin usually really look forward to welcoming the public and interacting with the public um, every June for Doors Open Ottawa. Unfortunately, due to the circumstances this year, that wasn't possible, but we hope that this has piqued your interest and we really look forward to seeing you again in person at 1030 Innes Road uh, for subsequent years of Doors Open Ottawa. Thank you, bye-bye.